back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So every now and then I do one of these podcasts and I think about it afterwards and I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to tell my wife about this one. Like I feel guilty that I've done a podcast and I've said some shit that she doesn't know about. And so I'm like, it's not really fair the whole world knows more about me than you. Because she doesn't listen to this podcast and that train's fucking gone now. Because I'm not fucking having her listen from day one and then have her asking questions about how I was feeling emotionally fucking 400 days ago. I'm like, I don't know. I'm out of my fucking mind half the time. So now she can only listen from the start when I'm dead. But I do play her a few episodes here and there and she enjoys it when she listens to it. But I just, yeah, nah. I mean, she could listen if she wants to, but I warn her against it. But every so often I do an episode where I'm like, fuck, I have to tell her about this because some of her friends listen and it's not really fair. And also, more importantly, I don't want to get in trouble down the track unexpectedly. So I'd rather face it and confront it straight away. Like, babe, look, you might hear some rumors. It might float on down the grapevine that I... Previously, in a previous life, as a different Boyle, not me, not the person you see in front of you, a younger, dumber version of myself, it might get back to you that I, that I took a girl in a wheelchair to the disabled toilets and got a hand job. It wasn't a good one, babe, don't worry. And so last night was one of those episodes, I did it and I'm like, fuck, I'm just going to have to tell her about this episode. I'm just going to have to tell her about my ex-girlfriend and hooking up with some other girl and then getting busted and fucking all this shit. Just listen to yesterday's episode. It wasn't even that bad. So after I did it, I went back in. I'm like, oof. Oh, that was a tough one tonight. She's like, what did you talk about? I'm like, oh, crazy bitches. And he's like, who's a crazy bitch? I'm like, ex-girlfriends and, you know, stuff like that. She's like, whose ex-girlfriend? I'm like, mine. And I've never fully told her about my ex-girlfriends. I've just said surface shit. Like, yeah, her name was this and we broke up and yeah, whatever. And when we first got together, she was trying to tell me about her ex-boyfriends. I'm like, hey, hey, that's enough. I don't need to hear anything about your ex-boyfriends. I do not care and I do not need any fucking visuals. And I think that's the way you play it as well. No one needs to know your full fucking history. Who gives a shit? Especially in the age of Tinder, which I missed. Just assume every guy and girl has fucked at least 100 people. You don't need to go into fucking detail. And who cares? Really, who cares? Like, you see the bitches on The Bachelor talking about their past boyfriends and exes and how they've been hurt and how they've been brokenhearted and all this shit. It's like, shut up. I don't want to hear about how some fucking loser dumped you. That goes for guys and girls as well. Guys, your lady doesn't need to know how many girls you've fucked. Especially when you add like 10 or 12 onto the top of your real total. If you have to, if you absolutely insist on telling your fucking partner all about one of your exes, just make it one of your exes. Don't make it fucking four, five... Don't go through the fucking entire sob story of your fucking tragic dating life. Just choose one. Say it wasn't meant to be. We went our separate ways and that's it. Everyone is fucking damaged goods. At least present as though you're still in mint condition. Barely used. Or if you're a little bit older, some fucking funky vintage. That's my fucking advice anyway. So I had to go in there last night and I pretty much did a second podcast to my wife. I told her the whole story. And then the questions started. And that's what I was not looking forward to. Who was your mate who hooked up with her? Who was her friend? How long did you date for? What happened? How did you break up? And I answered them all because I knew it wasn't going to stop. Then the next morning, hop in the car. I've got a couple more questions. I'm like, this is exactly why (laughs) you don't say shit. You keep your mouth fucking shut. But it was all sweet. We had a long conversation and I felt like driving the car directly into a tree. I just don't think that shit helps. Like, ladies, here's some advice for you. A guy will ask you about your past. And it's out of curiosity, but it's mainly to gauge how fucked up you are. And it will mainly be like sexual things too. 
like, have you ever been peed on? And if you say yes there, you've boxed yourself into a corner. Even if you have, say no. The foundation of all good relationships are lies. Like, seriously, have a think about it. Knowing all the things you've done, would you date you? (laughs) Would you date you? Do you think all those things need to be divulged? No. This is for guys as well. Get your fucking ego out of the way and just say you've banged seven or eight girls in your life. That's it. That's all they need to know. Just keep it to the basics. And if the relationship lasts long enough, you become completely different people anyway to your past. You don't want that shit lingering. Lies, people. If you want a successful relationship in the 21st century, you must lie. Anyway, you thought I forgot, but I remembered it's Hypothetical Monday. Hypothetical Mondays. Tell me why Hypothetical Mondays. It might seem like these rants are getting longer because I'm just tacking the hypotheticals on the end. And you might be right. I might be slowly trying to phase out the hypotheticals. Not just yet, though, because I've got nothing to replace it with. But we'll see. We'll see if I can come up with some exciting new fucking direction to take the podcast. So anyway, the hypothetical this week was sent in by Mark. Would you rather get great sleep, be stress-free, but have minimal money for the rest of your life? Or wake up early, be tired constantly, work hard, and be rich. Well, Mark, what do you think I've chosen? I went from waking up early, being tired constantly, working hard, and being poor, to getting okay sleep, being kind of stress-free, and being poor. Being poor isn't that bad if you don't want anything. People talk about fuck you money, like he has $100 million, he's got fuck you money now. That is not fuck you money. Fuck you money is like $400,000 a year. $100 million is I've got fucking problems money. If someone offered me $100 million or $400,000 for the rest of my life, I would take the $400,000. I don't want the headaches that come along with $100 million. If somehow I could figure out how to fucking make $400,000 a year, that's all you need. You can have a nice place to live, you can eat well, you can fucking travel, you can sling a little bit of cash to friends and family, you're fucking sorted. Right now, I am quite a way off $400,000 a year. So far this year, I am exactly $400,000 short of earning $400,000. Hopefully, there's a fucking upturn in the new year. But anyway, that's me done for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around and I'll see you the fuck later.